What's up guys and welcome back to the final episode of our EcoZoo series. As you can see the zoo has really filled in now and we're right on the last episode. I can't believe we've come this far and honestly I've been overwhelmed by the support for this series and for the channel since it started. It's really amazing to hear how much you enjoy watching these videos and I will definitely continue to make them. Now the last episode we are going to have a look at building a lion pride rock habitat that's been massively requested and we will also do what we did I think in the first episode what I said we do we just have a look at a memorial too. Now I've just gone ahead and sold a few of our penguins so that we get a bit of a cash injection because we have quite a few penguins right now um, and now I think we're going to have a look at what our requirements are for the lion habitat. So if we look at west uh, Western African or they're just West African lions. There we are West African lions. You can see they're critically endangered only 250 in the wild. That's insane. Um, so, so bad. Um, but let's have a look at how many, well, how many are in there? So it's going to be 2 to 30. Wow, we're not, we're not going to have 30, I can tell you now. <laughs> let's say we've got 5 adults and 5 juveniles as a maximum. Oh, they only need 1,500 square meters. That's, that's definitely doable. And it's grade 3 climb proof, more than 3 meters. So we can use our wooden logs for that because they're grade 3 and it'll keep it in keeping with the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the zoo. So I like that. We are going to be using this area here, as you can see in the torrential rain. <laughs> Um, but it does resemble Pride Rock when it's not hossing it down with rain. <laughs> and it'll be a cool view for the gondola as they go by. They can see the lions too. So I think we're going to use this area. I'm going to start setting out the uh, the habitat area with the, the, uh, the boundary with the barriers. And I'll see you in a second. Okay, so we've just built it and it's 15,000 square meters, which is kind of ridiculous because that's 10 times as much space as we need, but it is going to get smaller because we're going to put probably a nice little water area in here, which I might actually do now, see how it looks. Um, but yeah, I like that a lot. Look at that. They can, they can swim a bit if they want. Can lions swim? They must be able to swim their cats, right? At least a little bit. They don't need any water area, so maybe we should reduce the amount that this is up there. Maybe just have it, yeah, like that. Have a little pool they can drink from. Be nice clean water. Is it within our water area? It is. Okay, it's still touching, so the water pump can get it. So that's good. It means they've got clean water. Now the water, now the area is, yes, yeah, so it's 13,000 now. They've got 2,000, of almost 3,000 of water area. And they got a little, uh, I made like an accessible ramp here, which took me ages to actually uh, get sorted. Uh, but we've got, we've got stairs access and we've got more accessible access here, which I think you always need. It's just, it should just be a requirement for everything. And I think it is nowadays, which is good. Um, I always think about things like the London tube system <laughs> when I think about accessibility, because some of those things were built so many years ago that they're terrible for accessibility. Uh, but we're building this today and it's going to be great. Now, I think what we might do is do what we did here with the wooden logs and just add in a wooden surround around this uh, this platform so that it, it's just uh, it's not just on posts. <laughs> uh, so we're going to do that now.
Okay, so we've just managed to, uh, we had to move the barriers because they were colliding with the path, which I didn't think about and should have done before. Um, so top tip, make sure you always make your barriers the right length before you build anything over them. Uh, but the whole thing should be three meters. I'm just realizing it's not. I think it's just three meters on this, this stretch. So I'm just going to put these back down because I was testing it before. Um, let's put these to, to uh, 2.38. Let's just grab everything and move them up. It's all going to be roughly the same. I need to make sure everything is above three meters. Let's just have it be there. And then we can try and sort out these tiny little differences where we've got them. But I think that's good, actually. Um, the whole thing is pretty similar. 3.7. It's 3.8 on this one that can just come. I think it's just because of the uh, the change on the angle and everything um, to have the, the gate. But it's fine. As long as everything is uh, is the correct height, we just need it to be uh, three meters at least. So that that'll do. That'll do. In the words of Shrek, that'll do, donkey. Right. <laughs> we are we are done with the barriers. Now we need to make this West African lion. And maybe we should have a look at getting some um, on the on the animal trading tab. Let's have a look. Oh, there are some for sale. We've got some really good ones, actually. They're only three years old. How long do they live? Um, they live, oh wow, only 14. Wow, that seems really young. I swear, like, that that seems really young. But, you know, I guess it is what it is. I'll trust that they're right. We've got lots from a few different zoos. So we just need to make sure we're getting them from different zoos. Um, but we do have quite a few on offer. Let's, let's order them by uh, appeal and see what we get. Okay, so we've got all of these. Let's just move past these ones that we don't need. Because a lot of them are old as well. Um, we don't necessarily want to go for like the leucistic ones. Okay, I'm just looking for females because we've got loads of males on offer. This seems a decent, decent one. I'm going to get this one from Frontier because it's quite cheap. I'm going to focus on the ones from Frontier Zoo because they're not going to be related as well. So this one's also okay. Let's get her. And another one. I think if we get three females and one male, that's probably good. And if we get uh, this male from Sir Henry Foundation Zoo, he seems pretty good and he's quite a good price. And then we can send all of these to quarantine, which is right over here. It's actually pretty reasonably close considering we've only got one quarantine. Still right at the entrance to the zoo, but it's quite centrally located. Oh no, it's actually quite far. <laughs> when I look at it, it's quite a long way for it to go, but it's fine. Let's let them go through quarantine and then we could start... Um, we keep getting these building alerts. It's literally just saying that our facilities are in high demand, which obviously, yeah, that's, you know, we could get some more facilities, get some more money and stuff, but that's not a bad thing. The game keeps presenting it like, you know, we're losing loads of money. Oh look, there's a talk. There's only a copy. Is that a copy appetite, isn't it? Yeah. There they are. They're in here somewhere. Oh, they're just sleeping at the back. Both of them. Cute little things. That's cool. They can learn about the Akapi. Now, while we wait for our uh, lions to go through quarantine, um, we could probably... Uh, look at our elephants. Um, we could probably think about making some kind of shelter on here like we did with the uh, the elephant habit. Although I quite like it being open. I might just have a couple of couple of like umbrellas or something um because we've got them in our where are they i think they're in facilities actually like parks and benches yeah like canopies and stuff maybe if we put a little bit of benching up here we're using the benches and then maybe we just put in a few canopies oh look we've got like these african picnic canopies they're quite cool i'm tempted just to put a few of these in There we go. We just built something. That's a bit different, actually. Uh, just making these like long shade canopy areas. 
which I think is something. And we need to add in bins and stuff as well. So let's put a few recycling bins in. And then of course, we're gonna need our donation bins as well. Uh, we could also make this whole side, uh, this whole side here glass, which might be nice. Should it be one way glass? Nope, um, I don't like this though. That could, just needs to be one panel. <laughs> it's a bit weird. And let's put in some education about the lions. Including an education talk point. Did we already color these for the zoo? No, we didn't. We've kept them the same color. Oh, that's right. Let's put one here. And then this will be about the lions um, when we actually get it there. When we actually get them in there. Looks like they're passing quarantine, quarantine though, which is good. It's what we like to see. I've uh, got so many notifications. I'm just going to ignore. <laughs> Uh, we're getting our education in there. We do need to put in some educational speakers as well. I'm just going to put them in the corners up here. Oh, we're not going to be able to see the size until we get the lions in. So we're going to have to sort that out in a second too. But I also think we should have some paw prints. I'm going to put a paw print here and here. Because they're really cute and they actually really work with this avatar. Oh, we're about to inbreed. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh no, it's too late. Why are you doing this? Okay, well let's uh let's put you on contraceptives. I mean you're already pregnant, but let's just guard against the future. And all our lines are past quarantine, so let's put them all into the habitat. And once they're in there, we can start to change some of these set, you know, we can we can paint the terrain so it suits their needs and we can also sort out all of our education so it actually lines up with what we need it to be. For now though I think we should also move some of our conservation boards over. I'm also going to add this into our work zone. We need to add this habitat in. So I'm going to go Africa end and add this in. And then we are going to need a little staff area because currently they're just using these staff buildings, which isn't where we need everything to be. Um, oh, I'm also going to add their education talk into that work zone and then just add everything into zoo. Oh no, someone's sick. Oh, uh, call the vet. That's not good. River boats without power. Oh yeah, that's okay. We just need to fix that solar panel. Let's not pretend like it's the end of the world. It's just one solar panel, one out. Okay, <laughs> come on. Come on, everyone. We can pull together. <laughs> and while we wait for our lions to enter the habitat, let's rename some of the animals we've got around the zoo. So our big male African savannah elephant is going to be called Horton. And one of our other elephants who's now pregnant is going to be called Cheese. And our other female elephant is going to be called Flora. And some of our African wild dogs need renaming. So we're going to have Phoenix. And over here we've got Sunday. And oh, Sunday's jumping around. Sunday's our alpha female. And our elderly alpha male is going to be called Michelangelo. Then in the den, we're going to have Sunshine. We're going to have Tuna. There's Phoenix already and Sunday. And where are the others? <laughs> oh, there's one in the entrance. Oh, that's Michelangelo. We've already got them. Let's see if there's any more hiding anywhere. Oh, no, that's all of them. That's all the African dogs renamed. We've got one male uh, Amur Leopard. So we actually need to get a female Leopard now. 
which is she must have passed away and I've missed uh, replacing her in the zoo in the breeding program. So this is pretty good one, actually. Let's sort them by appeal. And is that the top one? Yes, it is the top one. She may have even been the one we were just looking at, um, but she's only three years old. I think let's get her and send her to quarantine. And let's name this male leopard Sabor or Sabor. <laughs> I don't know which one. <laughs> it looks like our bird's tape has grown up. So we're going to release her into the wild for 32 credits. And then we've got two in here which need renaming. So I think the male who's asleep down here is going to be called Percy. And then the female who's having a little bit of a swim is going to be called Brax. We also have way too many lemurs, so I'm going to go about uh, releasing a bunch of these because I think that's what's causing them to not be fed enough is that we just have way too many. So if we release these, that at least gives us a breeding pair and they can all be released. So that's 81 credits. And the red ruffs we're going to release five and that gives us 188. So now it's just the babies and a breeding pair that's left. Hopefully that will sort out some of their issues. And Karan. The doll has dialed, or Karen, I don't know how we're saying it, <laughs> um, but they've passed away. I think we need to rename our dolls as well. So let's go through them. We've just got males at the minute. Let's see if we can get a female doll. Yes, we can get a few females. So I think maybe let's get a couple of uh, young females and send them to quarantine. Now we're going to name these dolls. This one's going to be Misty. And they're the alpha male. Then we're going to have Giancarlo. We're going to have Prince. One of our younger ones is going to be Bandit. And I think our oldest male is going to be Bartosz. Now we're going to get a new black and white rough lemur and send them to our quarantine. But the females are going to be called Delta and Lalo. Also, our keepers here now. So hopefully they'll, they won't they will be starving anymore because they can feed them finally. <laughs> now, I'm just going to rename the adult lemurs because the, the babies we're going to release straight away. So I don't really think there's much point in releasing them in naming them because they're going to be released really soon. So this one is going to be called Calypso. Then we're going to have Gelato in here. And this elderly ringtailed lemur is going to be called Goofy. Ah, and see, they're all running for food now. <laughs> then we're going to have Bean. Rosie, who's just found the food. And Herbert, who is sat next to her eating the food. Oh, Bonobos also need renaming. So this one, who's a bit lively, is going to be called Nutty, because I think that's fairly self-explanatory. <laughs> this much more calm pregnant female is going to be called Maria. Then we're going to have Aurora, Ether, Safari, and Cotton. Now, I don't know why, I, I don't know what this means. Perhaps you can help me in the comments, but when they're outside of for maturation, does that just mean that they need to mature into adults? I think it might, and then they'll be accepted into the group. I think it's kind of okay at the minute. Oh, oh my goodness. That is a really serious error. <laughs> okay, we're gonna emergency capture you because I've not paid attention and the lions have gone in. <laughs> Look at them though, that's incredible. Uh, we do just need to make sure that the entire barrier is the whole way around is climb proof. And I'm just going to put climb proof on both sides just to make sure it's definitely there. Um, and then I think they won't be able to escape. Ah, they still can't escape because of the ground. OK, I'm just going to raise the ground up around the side. It's because of this mountain. I think we're OK. We've also got dangerous fighting. Oh no, it's going on in here because we've got too many. So I think one of the, uh, yeah, the young one has grown up. So that's fine. We're just going to release them into the wild. Uh, they must have been inbred because they didn't have great genes, but you know, they can still be released into the wild. And now balance should hopefully be restored. We've got some people have passed quarantine, so that's good. Let's put our dolls into their habitat, which is over here and put our leopard into their habitat. And finally, also put our lemur into their habitat, which is over here. Look at our lions. Look at them. Aren't they amazing? Look 
the mail as well. Wow. That's so cool. They've got so much space as well. They must be loving it here. <laughs> they're convening around this barrier, which is a bit concerning, but I think they're okay. Wow. Okay, well, we need to pause the game um, because we need to make sure their habitat is appropriate for them. So what I'm going to do is go through the rest of the animals in a quick fire on the rest of the zoo and rename any animals we haven't named um, just in super quick fire and then we can come back and finish off the African lion habitat. Our Chinese pangolins, Bubble, Squeak and Grande, our terrifying gharial, Bluey, and the even more terrifying Africa, who are both on contraceptives at the minute because they've gone out of control with their breeding. If you have a look here, they have quite a few children. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is insane. For our otters, I like the name Fernando, so it's gonna be Frisky Fernando. <laughs> and the babies, Bibble, Tiff, Riddle, and Sid. We've only got one Goliath frog, so we need to go look for another one. We need at least one more male if we can get one. Yes, we can. Okay, so we're going to grab one. This one, this one seems a good balance between age and, uh, uh, and genetics. I'm going to put them straight in there. So now we have our two Goliath frogs. I'm not going to rename any of the exhibit animals as we've been over before because they just breed and die way too quickly to keep track of. Oh, Himalayan brown bears have had babies. And I think we need to name the adult male Poo, the female Lee, and the little cubs Ginger and Vienna. Now we've got one Komodo dragon male, which we need to call, which we're going to call Coda. And we need an adult female, really, because I think these are all their children. So let's get another female. This female seems okay. She's a bit younger. Let's send this one to quarantine and then we'll move her over in a second. We've got our Malayan tapers, Goose, their baby figs, and the adult male, Liam. And then our buffalo are going to be called Julia, Luna, Bread, <laughs> and Brandy. They also need an adult male, so we need to get them an adult male. Ah, oh, we still can't do this at the minute. There's no more male, so we'll have to wait on that for now. We've got a couple of male Nile Lechwi which we need to release to the wild because they're outside of our gender ratio now. Because Lupin should be the only male in the habitat. And look all the giraffes we've got! That's insane! Look at them there! Wow, it's so amazing! Okay, let's get the other male. Ah, oh, he's over here. Uh, release him. And then have a look at our female Nile Lechwi. We're gonna have Sadie, Honey, Moonlight who's pregnant, and Belle. And that takes us to the giraffes. Now there are a couple of males that are outside the gender ratio now, they've grown up a bit. So we're gonna release them to the wild. Wow, that's one, that's 151 credits just for one animal. I want 228. Wow. So that's both of them gone. Then it's just Top Man Harold, who's this one? Yeah, this just looks a bit bigger. <laughs> uh, Top Man Harold, and then the females, which we need to make sure we've named. Now, I don't think we've renamed them. We've named them Limba. So I'm going to call this one Danielle. I'm going to call this one Pebble. This one Spots. Then we're going to have Mabel, Petal, Stacy, Nessa, Felia. And then the males are going to be Hamlet, Benedict, and George. Now we need to name our proboscis monkeys. We're going to go Sherlock for the male, and Orion, Atlantic, Sirius, and Eeyore, who's brave enough to sleep next to the elephants like that. Then for our horses, we're going to have Falafel, Onion, Pedro for our male, Vasa, Maggie, Jolly Jumper, whose neck is doing something I cannot understand. Oakley, and then the babies, Hubert and April. Our hippos need a rename as well. So we're gonna have Chubbs and Fiona. Then our red pandas, if you can see them, we're gonna have Paprika or Paprika, however you say it. One of them's just reached maturation, so they're outside the gender ratio. So we're gonna release them into the wild because we're only supposed to have a breeding pair. And then our female is down here. They're going to be called Fifi. Howard's enclosure also has another male uh, giraffe. So we're going to release him into the wild. Look at Howard, just chilling out. Then the other giraffes are going to be named Eiffel and Buddy. 
And we've got quite a few Oryx males outside the gender ratio. So we're going to release a number of them into the wild. And now we're going to rename the others. Yoda, Bonnie, Tasaki, the babies, Domo, Cappuccino, and Spoon. Then we have T, Mulan, Demeter, Bullseye, and Oka, or Oka, Sokka, Artemis, and Lorena. Now, I do want to say that I'm trying to rename all the animals I can so you can get your names into the zoo before the end of the series. Um, but obviously that's not going to be possible. You guys have been so amazing and have given me so many names for this zoo. But we'll definitely do it again in the next zoo and you can give me all new names and we can start fresh with it. But for now, I just want to finish off naming and getting as many new names into the zoo as I can. Now we've only got the chimps and the gorillas to go before our lion habitat. Let's name these Bonnie, Clyde, Tony, Gordon and Jack. And then our gorillas, we're going to name the male Kerchak from Tarzan. <laughs> Scout. This little bubba is going to be called Gizmo. Then we're going to have Daffodil for this drinking female. Tiny Tim for the little baby gorilla, which I also think would be funny when he grows up. <laughs> and P Pie for this other one. And then finally, we're back to our lions, who are obviously going to name the male Simba, as he has a poo. This female, who's pooping as well, we're going to name Noelle. I'm probably mispronouncing that. Penelope. And the other female we're going to rename Fern. Who's already escaped. In fact, we'll name the female Leopard Fern. We'll rename this one Houdini because they've already managed to escape. And I saw that was a suggestion from one of you for an animal that escapes. So we're going to call our lion Houdini. And now that our lions are all in here and we're ready to start finishing off the habitat, I think it's time that we set all of the education to be the correct animals. So just going to set all of these to be West African lion and then also set up this talk to be on the right month, which I think is going to be November. Oh, I'm going to have to check. Uh, I think the elephants were the last one and they are set to October. Okay, so they probably need to be on December then. Uh, let's set them to December. You have a nice Christmas talk on uh, on the lions and they can throw food in, which is so cool. Um, and this is all set up other than that. So that's good. We've got all this ready. Um, these are just like generic education stands, the paw prints, but they are very thematic. And it is now hosting it down with rain, which is really great. Um, we don't have a challenge reward. I don't know why it's saying that we do. Um, but we do need to sort out the terrain types. So at the minute, they're actually pretty happy. They just need a bit less long grass than they've got. And the plan for this habitat is to make this into a pride rock habitat. And you can't see a thing with all this rain and the darkness. Oh, that's a bit better now. It's a bit better. Um, look at them running around. Wow, they love it. That's so cool. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm tempted to... Obviously, we could make this all rock, but I don't really think that's what the lions would want. And I quite like that it's like it's like pride rock in the jungle, you know, <laughs> like in the rainforest. So I'm quite tempted to keep it as it is most of the way and just do a little bit of terrain editing um, to, to make it a bit more what they need. So you can see we've got a bit of shelter created by these, which I think we should definitely turn into like a bed in here. There's like an actual cave in there. Um, but for now, let's put the terrain to the right types. They need less long grass. Oh, we're about to inbreed. That's not good. You just turn into an adult. Let's just put you on contraceptives while we can. They've got so many building alerts because uh, basically some of our buildings are in high demand, which is a good thing, but for some reason the game seems to think that we need to know about it all the time and like fix this, it's a real issue. It's like, no, no, um, I get that guests could be annoyed that they can't use the facilities, but it's kind of a good thing and that we're making money and all of that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, let's, uh, let's continue. I'm just kind of blending in some short grass uh, to the long grass that we already have. Okay, I'm quite happy with the terrain like type. I like that it's all grassy and it fits everything that they want. It's also way bigger than they need, which is really cool. 
Um, so now I think we just need to make a bit of a habitat in here. I think if I hit L, yeah, you get a you get a spotlight um, in here. So they're clearly sleeping in here, although it is a bit of a bowl in here. So I don't think we need to, I think we need to edit the terrain slightly so it doesn't do that as much. Okay, so there's actually like a good cave in here that's completely sheltered. I'm going to put some bedding in here. You can't really see because of all the fog because we're in the middle of a storm. Uh, but I'm just going to add some extra large bedding and some large bedding in here. This is a nice little uh, bedding area for them. And then they can lull wherever they want. They're not going to get a great view of the guests from here if they just stay over there though. So I'm hoping they will move out and we can we can try and encourage them to do that with some enrichment. Okay, so we've got a number of things already. Restraint feed is interesting. Um, let's put some of the feeders and stuff that they're going to be using uh, near the front of the habitat because that's what, um, that's what the guests are going to be looking at. Like the blood pumpkin can go right there. And then some of like the sprinkler we could maybe have on this little island. I'm just going to dot the rest of the enrichment just around the habitat. Oh, Misty's died. Oh, poor Misty. Well, let's call the vets. I think we also had a couple of animals past quarantine. Oh, it was just one. We've got our female Komodo dragon that's past quarantine. So let's move her into the correct habitat of that one. And then we can start breeding again, which is great. And then we need to sort out the nature side of this habitat. So where are our sleeping lions? There they are. Um, they don't, they're happy with anything, really. But let's go for just a few trees then. Africa grassland. Maybe put a few rocks in as well. And uh, play around with it a little bit. Okay, we've just reached 18% coverage, which they are happy with. And I have to say, I'm pretty happy with this. I feel like it looks quite cute. I really hope, I like, I really wish it would stop raining. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's just stopped raining. Look at it now. Oh, it looks so much nicer with the rain gone. Oh, it's like the colors have come back to the world. <laughs> uh, I think I'm really happy with this. I think it looks really cute. And you know, we've managed to do the whole habitat too. They've still got that pride rock element. Um, I don't know if they can get up. Well, actually I'm sure they can get up there. They can jump like ridiculous amounts. But I think this gives us quite a cute little coverage of the habitat. So uh, I am quite happy with this. And they can, the guests can come, they can have a look from here. 
I think it will be really nice. Oh, we need to adjust this as well to be on the West African Lion. And probably make this like 15 meters. And same for the other one. Make this talk about the West African Lion. And about 15. Oh, it's going to overlap. Okay, they're going to be on 14. That one's not got power, which is a bit annoying. Um, we might just have to see where the power range is. Oh, it's just out of range. I think we could probably just shift this along a little bit. I don't think that was there for any particular reason. Okay, I've just shifted the solar panel along and now it's within range. And now we just need to move this conservation board across. Uh, so it's on the other side of the others. But that still works. Oh, maybe just a little bit more. Like there. And I don't think these are... Pa oh, these aren't power. Oh, we've got a few failed solar panels around here. That's why. Okay, well, let's just request the mechanic to come along, fix these three solar panels. We can probably do them all in one trip. <laughs> and then uh, all the conservation boards will be back online. But look, I think that's quite cool. Look how pretty that's going to be. And they're already doing... It's December, so they're doing the talk. How amazing is that? Hey! <laughs> love it. I love it. And you can just see the lion. Look at them, they're swimming. Wow, this game is so pretty. I, I do love the game, I've got to say. It's, uh, it's such a pretty game. And, and they're setting all the foods, so they're going to run out. Look at that one. Running through. <laughs> I love it. They're all just going to run across. They're just swimming their way, making their way over to the food. And hopefully this will pull the guests over this side of the zoo a lot more as well. Um, because they do have this kind of statement piece habitat now. Um, for the, you know, Af West African lions. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Now, the next thing we have to set up is in the zoo tab. If you go to staff, we've got staff uniforms now. Like, we can actually change the uniform, which is insane. We could have, like, different uniforms for different, like, types of worker in our zoo. Um, but I think I might just pick one... Oh, maybe we should have some some variants on it, but we're going to have a general theme. So I think it's going to be green and I'm just going to go through. You can just change all of these colors by selecting a new color and then clicking apply. And that's the new color for all the vets. Um, I'm going to go through, have a look at some stuff and uh, so we can see what it's going to look like. And uh, I'll see you in a sec when I've done it. <laughs> OK, so I've gone for an all green look for our vets here and I'm going to keep the theme, but I'm going to change the jacket color for each type of staff. For our keepers, we've gone for a nice pale blue for their shirt, but the rest is still the same green colour scheme as everyone else. Our educators have the same, but they've got a nice purple shirt. Our mechanics have a nice red shirt. Our security guards have a nice teal colour. Our caretakers are in yellow. And our vendors are in orange. Now, I also gave the restaurant and the ticket booth staff the same uh, colour uniform as the vendors, because they're kind of vendors anyway. But that's such a cool feature. I really like that we can give our staff new uniforms now. Oh, we've got some problems over here. I'm going to request the mechanics to fix these because that's not good. Um, oh, I'm about to inbreed. Don't do that. I think it's because we're just waiting for Lupin to die now. Maybe Lupin should just go on contraceptives until he passes away because he is an elderly boy now. And that saves everyone else having to be on contraceptives. We can just take everyone else off because um, they're all... They're all on when they don't need to be. And as soon as we get a new male in here, which may not be in this series, because I'm hoping Lupin's going to make it to the end, um, then we'd obviously get a new get a new male and, uh, and start breeding again. Um, now, the final thing we're going to do in this episode, and in the actual EcoZoo itself, is build a nice memorial area. And we are going to do that with the monarch butterflies. Um, we're going to have a nice area in the centre here, I think. And I'm going to put in an exhibit. Now, we've actually got some conservation exhibits, which are pretty cool. Um, so I may just use one of these because I think they're quite interesting. Um, I quite like these. I think what we could do is perhaps smooth this whole area out quite a bit. And, uh, and, that, and present a bit less of a gradient along here.
Okay, we've just set out a couple of exhibits here. Uh, we do need to smooth the terrain out kind of like around the, the habitat so it doesn't look too odd that we've just sunk them into the ground. Um, but I think this is actually looking okay. It's looking pretty good. Um, you can see it from two sides on this one and from three on this one. I'm tempted to just make it two sides on each of them though and kind of keep it symmetrical. So it's got here, here, and then we've got a structure in the middle. And this structure in the middle is gonna generally form the basis of our uh, memorial. We're gonna kind of use the whole area, uh, but this is just a non-exhibit structure. Uh, let's smooth it out a little bit. And then, uh, then we're gonna add in our monarch butterfly. So we need to go to exhibit trading. This is the last endangered animal that we're adding in. We need to look at them actually on the Zoopedia. I don't even know what groups they need to live in. So they are endangered. Group size 1 to 90. Oh my goodness. So it seems like we can have quite a lot of them in here. So I think we might just get as many as we need. So this is from a private zoo. This is a rescue. Breeding program. A pet. Who has one single pet butterfly? <laughs> Another rescue. Breeding program. A rescue. Are there any more? No, that's everything. Okay, so we've got we've got enough though. We can have four in each. Oh, we've got a few exhibit animals that need to be released as well or traded. We can't release them, can we? So let's just trade all of these, get some cash for the zoo. And then we've got two males and two females for each uh, exhibit. I realized as well that whilst this design is pretty, it doesn't work with the butterflies. <laughs> so I'm going to delete these um, because what we actually need is um, the walkthrough exhibit. So we don't have any blueprints for that, but we can easily make our own. Um, so we're going to have to whack the walkthrough probably in here. So what I'm going to do is just raise this up for now and let's see what, we're, what we can do. Let's put our butterflies in here just to see what we're working with. Oh, it's so pretty. It's like a uh, like a greenhouse effect. And then I think you can you can customize what it looks like. Yeah, you can have its glass, you can have it solid or none. Okay, so now I'm gonna make one slight change to the design here. I think it'd be really cool if when we customize it, I've seen that you can have none as an option. So you can have netting, you could have glass, and have like a greenhouse. So this was netting, it wasn't a greenhouse. Uh, this is the glass. You can have it be solid like it was when we placed it, or you can just have none. And I think given that we're gonna have a bunch of flowers around here, there'd be no reason for them to kind of escape or do anything weird. So I'm gonna get rid of the doors as well because we don't need the PVC strip. Is it PVC? Yeah. Um, because that just seems a bit odd. What's the mulch? I don't know what the the floor type is. I think maybe we've uh, we've we've sunk it into the wall too much. Um, we can sink the wall and ceiling material. Oh, we could have just put that there. Doesn't matter. Um, it's going to be none um, for the ceiling too. Otherwise, it's just like a floating thing. <laughs> then what we can do is we can move these structures down into the habitat and kind of do what we had before. Um, we might make a slight change to the design though. I think we're only going to have two but we could sink these in like here. Maybe slightly further down. And in here. And now we've got quite a cool little area still. Um, and we can populate this with a bunch of flowers too. Can we see the butterflies? It's got no power. Maybe it needs power first. Hold on. I don't know why it'd need power to see the butterflies, but it definitely needs power. Oh, it's probably gonna get power from this one when it gets fixed. Um, so in, in that case, I'm actually gonna leave that there for now. Who is the mechanic coming to fix this? Right, let's pick you up, pop you down over here, and then you can fix everything um, because we do need that fixing. Oh, we've got fighting in the Akapi habitat because our young male has grown up. So I'm gonna, oh my goodness, you can see them there. You can see them fighting there. We're gonna release them into the wild. And that should resolve their issues, which is good. Now I'm just gonna smooth out the terrain a little bit if I can, but I think it is just gonna be like that. It's okay, it's just 
Uh, it's because the, there's still a rectangle there, but I don't think you can see it. It's only here that it looks a bit odd, but we can always cover that up later anyway with flowers and stuff. So hopefully it'll get power soon. But other than that, I think we haven't got an enrichment for it yet, but we will definitely research that. And then we just need to make sure that it's sitting in the right range. It needs to be 21 to 30. So let's set this to be 26. That seems pretty good. 26 degrees and it will come down until the butterflies are happy. Um, the maintenance, can it be every month? And the management, we should probably manage the population. Let's say eight males or 10 males, 10 females. And any more we'll uh, store in the trade center and then we'll release them. And let's sort them by appeal. Now we do have to add this to one of our work zones. So let's have a look at which work zone is closest. I'm thinking it may be like Asia end. This may be the closest work zone they have. Mm, they've got all their staff buildings over there. And the staff buildings over here. What's what's this one? Asia middle. No, Asia middle's over there. It'd be Asia entrance. They've got quite a few. Let's see how many keepers we've got on the different work zones. So at the minute we've got three on Africa end, which we don't need. So maybe we should have, let's move one of these over to Asia entrance. And then we'll just add it in to the Asia entrance work zone. And we also need to add it into the zoo work zone. Now we're going to need education as well. So let's just grab some education boards and just put them in along this path. Uh, we could change the color, but we didn't earlier on our other exhibits. So I'm tempted just to keep the same, the same theme going. Let's set this to be Monarch. Um, and then we'll just put a few as we go along and then add some speakers in as well. Okay, so we've just added in quite a lot of education, including the speakers, and we needed to get another solar panel because this one didn't quite reach, which is a little bit annoying. Um, we do need to move these benches because that's not going to work. Okay, so we've just put some more benching in. Um, we added some bins. Uh, we do need some donation bins, which we don't have yet. And I think we could just steal these from the bear habitat. Let's duplicate that and then put a couple of these in. I think that'll do. Now we need to look at these as well. You can see them on here. Can we actually see the butterflies themselves? Because I haven't actually seen any yet. <laughs> I was kind of expecting them to, to fly around. Um, Oh, I think it just zoomed in on one and I missed it. Let's click on one here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. If you click on them. Yep. Is that there? If I play, will they come out? Will we start like seeing them? Oh no, someone's died. Oh, one of our, one of our um, scimitar horned Oryx has passed away. That's very sad. Okay, we need to go. Sorry, sorry, Oryx. We need to go back to the butterflies though. I want to try and see one. Otherwise, this is going to be terrible for our guests if we can't even see them. Oh, they're there. They're in like the boxes. Look at them. That's so cute. Oh, there we go. Okay, so they do exist. They are around here. We just, uh, we need to kind of, to be honest, we need to think about where they're from um, and what kind of plants they'd have here. So let's let's have a look at the, the Zoopedia. It says... Natural habitat is biomes, temperate grass and tropical. Oh, fair enough. This is quite easy, actually, because we could just keep with the tropical theme of, of where we are. Um, found worldwide, apart from Arctic and sub-Antarctic regions. Oh, sub-Arctic and sub-Antarctic regions, so that's fair enough. But it's pretty much everywhere, and I think we're in North America right now. Um, but regardless, we'll just probably pick tropical plants from the world. Um, for our general habitat. So I think this could work. I'm going to start populating this with some flowers and then hopefully the whole area will come to life a bit more.
Okay, I think we've added enough flowers here now, and I think that looks so cute. Like, honestly, I'm, I'm really happy with this. So this is now our monarch butterfly habitat, and it is right in the center of what is going to be our memorial. Oh, I'm in a tree. I think it's probably time that we actually add the memorial elements around because I want this area around here to be the memorial area. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so I've just added like a wooden wall around the whole of the outside and I'm going and some uh, solar lights underneath it to highlight it. And now I'm going to add some memorial plaques to this wall along here and that will be the kind of memorial for our animals. Now I need to look up, there is actually a list, I think, of all the animals who've passed away somewhere. Memorials, there we go. Um, and you can see all the habitat memorials. These are all of the animals who passed away in order. So starting with Big Tony. Um, and going all the way through, it's sad actually looking at the list, we've got Melvin there, Frisky Felipe, <laughs> there were so many, um, some boobafu, loads of them that uh, that passed away, which are like noteworthy uh, animals from our zoo, but all of them are going to get a plaque, like Moto Moto, um, all of them are going to get a plaque because they all deserve one. And I can't just, I just can't believe how many we've had, like Peanut as well. Like we've had so many animals in this zoo. It's been such fun, like uh, having them all in here. Um, but yes, I'm going to go through the list now and make a plaque for each of them. I think when you create a, uh, you can click on an animal to create a memorial for it. Yes. Okay. So that's nice and easy to do. So that saves a lot of time as well. So all you have to do is go into the zoo tab, click memorials, and then click on the animal you want. So let's say Big Tony and create a memorial. And this is a memorial for Big Tony. Wow, okay, so we've gone the whole way around this uh, this ring, and then we've gone, we've started the second lap as well with the another seven we've got here from Maria to uh, Barika who just passed away. Um, but yeah, they're literally all here. It took so long to do this. <laughs> Just randomly selecting the voice you can see. I did actually go through. We've got some classics as well, like um, Sizable Samuel I completely forgot about over here. And then Motomoto Moto somewhere around here. I don't know which one, but uh, he's here somewhere. There he is, there, Motomoto Moto and yeah, loads of them. There, there's literally been so many animals. There's Peanut there. Um, I can't believe how many animals we've had in this zoo, but it's actually really sad to see them all here. Like these are the ones that passed away. Uh, obviously we, we released a lot of them to the wild, which is the purpose of the zoo. Um, but it, it's really cool to recall them this way. And ideally we'd have like a photo of each animal and then we could have like a little, the little mug shot here. Um, but we didn't do that going through. So it seemed a bit weird to try and like just use a generic animal photo. And it would probably take me like seven hours to find all of them and put them all on. Um, so I'm not going to do that, but we can use our imagination and imagine that the zoo had uh, had taken a photo of each animal when they were born or something, something cute like that, and then that could be their photo here. Uh, but I think this is such a cute area though, like with all the flowers here as well. Now, 
we do let's just check up on the uh the monarch butterflies i think that i don't think they really have many requirements oh can we click on them there we go um their welfare they've got severe welfare issues oh it's the temperature is it because i've not ah for some reason it's not set to 26 let's uh let's play and make sure it does this time ah it was probably because it didn't have power it couldn't reset so then when i just said it before it like didn't work at all um but there we go now they're good everyone's happy um, we could research them and get some more enrichment as well. That would be ideal, but we're obviously not going to have time in this episode to do that. Um, now, what I do need to do is add a bunch of nature around the outside of our zoo so that we can actually enclose the zoo in some trees. And I'm just going to probably do a very quick time lapse of me doing that because I'm just going to grab some trees like I have done over here. Um, grab some trees, grab some bushes like what I've done here and uh and just create a little area around the whole zoo that will border everything in oh no i thought lupin was gonna make it to the end but he's literally just passed away oh, bless him okay i'm gonna add him to the memorial and then i'm gonna add the border to the rest of the zoo bless him lupin the 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 gnarl lechery male let's add that in here there he is Poor Lupin. Right, now I'm gonna do the trees. <laughs> so in order to build the forest around the outside of the zoo, all I'm gonna do is copy a section of trees that we already have placed, because we've done this activity before. I'm just gra gonna grab something like this, and then I'm gonna merge them all into a group, and then I can just hit Control D and duplicate them. And then if you rotate them around a few times, you would never know that they were exactly the same. So I'm gonna do that and place them around in a few different, just uh, on the, the whole of the outside of the zoo. I'll probably grab a few different selections and uh, soon we'll have a forest right the way the out, around the outside of our zoo. Okay, I think that looks loads better. Now you can see we've added all the trees around the outside. Um, I've left some of the hills without them because I feel like they wouldn't grow all over the hills as well. Um, but hey, I think I'm happy with how it looks now. I think it just really borders in the zoo and makes it feel a bit more, a bit more real, which is cool. And now it's time for one final tour of our finished eco zoo. I mean, I can't believe that the zoo is finally finished. It, I suppose something like this is never finished. As I look around, I can see loads of things. Oh, I could have put more trees in here. I could have put more plants in or rocks or something like that. Some kind of decoration, but... I'm quite happy with where it's at now, and I think it's probably time to move on to a different project. Uh, it, this has honestly been such an incredible experience for me in making these videos, making this zoo, and having the overwhelmingly positive response from you guys. You guys honestly make the channel. Um, I never expected I'd get the kind of response I did. And you're also like positive and friendly and funny. Um, I've honestly loved reading the comments of the channel uh, on, on these videos. And I always respond to all of the comments. I think to date I've responded to every comment that's like tagged me because I don't see all of them, but the ones that have been either fresh comments or ones where I've been tagged, I've responded to all of them because because I really love talking to you guys and this channel and this series have been such a massively like a positive influence on my life. It, I, can't, I honestly can't explain it. It's been so great to interact with you all and to, you know, meet new people and all of that good stuff that comes along with something like this. Uh, you never know when you put yourself out there what the response is going to be, but it's been so incredible from you guys and I'm so grateful for that. Um, this video is actually the 100th video on the channel as well, which is insane to me that I've made 100 videos. <laughs> um, and they've mostly been on a semi-regular schedule, I think we could agree, with, with some deviations. <laughs> But you know, life life gets in the way. Uh, but yeah, hundredth video, and to wrap up this series, which is such a like a crazy pivotal series for the channel, uh, is something really special for me. And I hope in you know I, I understand from hearing some of your guys' feedback on the comments that loads of you have been enjoying the enjoying the series, and you've been following along. Like some of you have been making your own zoos, the like kind of 
uh, copy elements of this one or like it's inspired you to do something similar, which is just so cool for me. I have to say, I had no idea that I'd get this kind of response from from this series or the, or the channel generally. Like, honestly, I didn't I didn't realize that you guys would enjoy these <laughs> as much as you have. And it means the world to me that you have. Um, I mean, the channel itself has has grown cr like a crazy amount since we started this series. I think I think when the series started, we had like less less than ten thousand subscribers, and now we're almost at thirty thousand, which is an insane number uh, for me. I know that there's loads of YouTube channels out there with like millions of subscribers, but thirty thousand to me is is crazy, and I'm so grateful for for your time. Your time in watching. I mean, I think this is episode 36 of the series, um, and and the fact that you'd give up your time and it like enjoy watching 36 episodes of content I've made is really humbling and something I don't take lightly. And I do really try and like respect your time. I say that on probably the longest video I've ever put out on the channel. <laughs> but I wanted to give you a nice big punchy end to the series on something that's a bit substantial. Um, you can see Howard there as well, our pale giraffe, probably my favorite animal in this, uh, <laughs> in this zoo. It's been so much fun as, as I see all these habitats that we've done, you know, the, the gorilla habitat, making the, the twin dome system, uh, the elephants that are coming up as well. Like I've enjoyed making this stuff so much and it's so great that you guys have followed along with me. Um, I don't really know what to say other than thank you. And I'm so glad you've enjoyed the experience. If you have, please do let me know. Even just say hi in the comments. It'd be great to speak to you. Um, and I know that it's not the last uh, Planet Zoo series we're going to do on the channel. We will be doing another one, probably straight away after this one. Uh, but it's been incredible to make this one, and I'm so glad that you guys have enjoyed it. And as we draw the Eco Zoo series to an end, I guess the only thing left to say is I hope you've liked this episode and the series. And if you have, please give it a like and a comment. It really helps the channel out and I'll see you in the next one.